Welcome to Seagull Stadium. My name is Jim Berkman. I'm the head lacrosse coach here at Salisbury University. Today we're going to talk about shooting technique. And I'm going to give you a routine that I use when I'm training young people. It's a routine that I've used when I've been training young ladies that have gone on to play Division I lacrosse. It's a routine that we use with a guy on our team that has bad mechanics. And it's a routine for guys that want to get back to the basics and refine their skills. This routine is governed or, or guided by three basic principles. All right, the first principle is that proper technique equals outcome or proper effort equals outcome. And that's important. It's not effort equals outcome, it's proper effort equals outcome. So it's important that we're doing what we're gonna be doing today with the proper technique. The second principle that guides to being a great shooter is that you have to give an uncommon effort at the common things. The common things being the fundamentals of the game and the fundamentals of shooting are very, very important to be great. If you don't want to be a good shooter, you want to be a sniper. And again, an uncommon effort at the common things. So what is an uncommon effort? It's an effort that far exceeds what the normal guy is doing. It's the guy that comes early, that's the guy who stays late. It's the guy that shoots buckets and buckets of balls to become a sniper instead of a good shooter. And I think the last principle in becoming a great shooter and using this technique drills that we're going to show you today is that you have to learn to outwork your talent. Everybody has a certain amount of talent, but when we become a great shooter, it's the guys that have learned to work and work using proper technique, endless hours to become great. So let's get started. Let's, uh, first of all, let's talk a little bit about our hands and where we want them on a stick. All right, obviously we want the bottom hand down at the bottom. To me, I believe the top hand is about 12, 12 inches away. You know, some kids get their hands way down here. I don't think you're ever going to really shoot like that in a game. I think about 12 inches apart from the top of your top thumb to the bottom of your pinky is probably a good place. Put some tape on your stick maybe even to make sure your hands are in that spot. Uh, a good shooter is like a good hunter, all right? A hunter has a great sight on his gun, and when we're shooting, we want our sight to be pointing towards the target. On, that, on our stick. And to point the target on our stick, our bottom hand has to be above our shoulder. And that's where mo most people go wrong when they're shooting. They have their hands down in here too far. They need to get their hands up. And if that bottom hand is shoulder or a little bit higher, they're going to get the leverage you know, created by the force to get the power that we want in our shot. Their top hand is 12 inches, all right, and it's almost at a 90 degree angle, as you can see in my arm. All right, the top hand, when, when I'm cocked, the gun is cocked now, the sight is pointing towards you, all right, and the barrel in the back has the ball. And when I f follow through and shoot, all right, the barrel is going to go right to the sight, right where I want to shoot it, all right. So hands up, all right, bottom hand above my shoulder, top hand about a 90 degree angle at my elbow, all right and I snap my wrist and pull my arms and turn my torso all right towards the target. Now, the first drill that we're going to share with you today, all right, is what we call the no no ball technique. Now we're just focusing on our technique. We're not worried about a ball right now. We're worried about our hand placement and we're doing it in a repetitive way. And I like to do this in sets of 25, all right? And it, and there's two parts to this, all right? It's the shot and then the return so that we're working on hand speed. So it would look a little bit like this. I'd have my hands up, pretending a ball was in the stick, all right? And I'm going to take a hard shot and snap. I hold it there for two seconds, and then I snap it back hard. Great technique, snap it back. I would do that 25 times right-handed, then I would switch over to my left hand, bottom hand above my shoulders. For most of you, that's your offhand. This is why your, your hands are usually down here, but we get our hands up, all right? And again, we're going to do the same thing, all right? We got our sight loaded, pointed at the target, the ball's in the, the barrel, and we're going to snap. Hold it two seconds, snap it back hard. Snap, snap, snap. Snap, 25 times each hand. And a nice progression to this would be to take your handle, I don't have a butt cap, 
fill it up with sand, get some extra weight in this stick, so now you're snapping something that's six, seven pounds, all right, and creating that wrist strength and, and accelerating the handle uh, so that you can shoot harder. That's step one, no ball technique. All right, when you go through the first round of these nine things that I'm gonna show you, we're not worried about accuracy right now, all right? We're worried about technique and we're worried about hand speed, all right? So we wanna develop technique and to be able to shoot the ball harder as a result of the technique. So we're not worrying about stinging corners right now. Right now, we're worried about putting the ball as hard as we can with great technique into the middle of the net. Once we get through the nine things and you get a little bit more advanced, all right, then we shoot the clock, all right? We shoot the clock. So the goal at the top is 12 o'clock. The upper right-hand corner, all right, would be 1.30. The right-handed goalie's off hip would be 3 o'clock, all right? Down there off his shin would be 4.30. Five hole would be six, all right? Stick side low for that right-handed goalie would be 7.30. Stick side hip would be 9 p.m. All right, and then upper right hand corner would be uh, 10 30 uh, p.m. And we would shoot two balls into each, one, each corner. For this drill, I like to have 32 balls, all right, um, so that initially we can shoot 16 right handed and then 16 left handed. Then we go to the next drill, we reload our balls 16 right, 16 left. But when we get to the clock shooting, we would still do 16 right-handed, but we would do two at 12, all right, two at 1.30, two at three, two at 4.30, two at six, et cetera, around the clock working on our accuracy, all right? So the first technique drill we're gonna do today is what we call knees shooting. So now to take the upper body out of it, all right, we're just gonna focus on our arms and our hands in our proper technique. So like I showed you, all right, with the no ball technique, I start with the ball up, all right? Proper mechanics, gun loaded, all right, and I'm getting ready to shoot it. Now, when I'm training someone, or your dad's helping you right now, all right, I, I would be setting the balls in the stick so that they wouldn't have to reach down and they would just reload their stick back to this position and I would put another ball in their stick and then they would fire. All right, so one cradle with our stick, snap and shoot. Scoop a ball, up, proper technique in hands, one cradle, snap and shoot. And I would do 16 right-handed, all right, and then I would do 16 left-handed, proper technique, all right, the sights are loaded, snap, shoot, load the gun, snap, shoot, load the gun, snap, shoot, really isolating our hands. All right, let's move to the next one. All right, the next one is what we call one knee shooting. Now, I got a towel out here today. Um, if you're gonna do this routine, it's nice to have a towel, especially when you're on turf, so the turf doesn't eat your knees up. All right, if you're out here shooting a lot of balls and you're on your knees, the turf will eat you up. That's why I have the towel here today. So the second one, all right, we're in a good athletic possession, position with our right knee down now. Just like if we were a pitcher and we had our two legs, all right, we got our right knee down, our left knee pointed, a good proper technique, all right, cradle, shoot, right to the middle of the net. Fire, 16 right. Switch knees, point your right toe, up, 16, left. All right, that's the third thing. All right, we call that one knee. Once we get off our knees, all right, now we're gonna get into our standing position and we're slowly working our way to a, uh, some crow hops in a minute. But the next drill, all right, again, we're not worried about our lower body right now. We're working on our hands and we're working on great technique. So we're just gonna square up to the goal. We're not gonna move our legs. We're in a good athletic position, all right? Hands up, all right? Again, we'd have 16 balls on the right, 16 balls on the left. If your dad's there working with you right now, he's putting the balls in your stick for you. You don't even have to bend over, all right? You got your hands up, you got the gun loaded, and you snap it 
right into the middle of the goal. One cradle and up. 16 right. All right, 16 left. Hands up, snap. Hands up, snap. And your dad can be checking you right now or your partner or your teammate to make sure that your bottom hand is above your shoulder. That's the next stage. All right, once we get done squaring up to the goal, we call it next drill is called sideline. All right, so now I'm gonna face the sideline, all right, with my feet, so I'm parallel to the sideline. But now I have my stick to the inside, all right? I have my stick to the inside. And we call this sidelines because we're gonna engage our core, all right, and start to bring the torso into it and your core into your shot. So now I get my hands up, I'm facing the sideline. I'm gonna turn my hips like a good golfer, your Tiger Woods right now. And I'm going to engage my whole lower body now. So now I'm facing the goal. All right. And you can, I can feel this right through my core right now. It's all stiffening and tightening up. It's, it's that coil ready to unleash. Hands up. 16 left. Engage the core. Square up. Hands high. Gauge the core. Hands up snap. Then I would go 16 right now. 16 to the inside. You're seeing my back now. But now watch. My hands are up. I turn like a good turn in golf. Gauge the core. Hands up. Snap. Firing the ball to the middle of the goal. Hands up. Engage. Snap. Hands up. Engage. Snap. All right, the next drill, drill number five, all right, or, or drill number six, I guess it is, is called the pitcher, all right? And just like a baseball pitcher's on the mound, he's in a, all right, he's in a good stance, he's got his feet together, all right, we're going to be like that. So I'm right-handed to start with, I'm facing the sideline, and when I step with, towards the goal, like a pitcher steps and he throws the ball, I'm going to turn and I'm going to point that front toe, my left toe, towards the goal. You're only taking one step, all right? So we get our feet together. Again, this would be 16 right, 16 left. Get your hands up, bottom hand above your shoulders, one good hard step, and a shot towards the middle of the goal. Just like a pitcher. See how I didn't move my back foot? I kept it on the yellow line. Hands up. We can work on engaging even a little bit more here. Hands up above your shoulders, feet together, hard as you can into the goal. 15 right. Now we're a lefty pitcher. Feet together, hands up, 12 inches apart, step with the right toe towards the goal. Snap. Hands up, load the gun, snap. And again, if you're with a partner or your dad or if I'm training somebody, when the, when the kid shoots the ball or the player shoots, he just brings his stick back and I set the ball in and we're ready to go again. All right, drill number seven, the crow hop. All right, so we've built it all up. Now we're getting into it. We're actually putting our feet and our lower body into it a little bit. Now we're going to take two steps, which we call two crow hops, all right, building that momentum and that power with our legs now. Still great technique in the upper body, still shooting the ball as hard as we can to the middle of the goal. We're not worried about accuracy yet. So we start with our legs together, all right. We're going to take two crow hops and we're going to fire. So it's going to look a little something like this. One, two, fire. You go back, place the ball in, hands up, one, two, fire. Feet together, hands up, one, two, fire. 15 right, 
than we always do with our left, what we do with our right, right? Hands up, one, two, fire. Hands up, one, two, fire. Hands up, one, two, fire. As hard as I can with our hands. We call that the crow hop. All right, now the next one is what we call the crow hop plus. That's a guy that takes that extra crow hop to gain some momentum and to gain some more power. Again, we're probably not gonna be doing this a lot in the game, but this, this will be something that'll really generate the power, all right, and hopefully help you get faster hand speed. So I'm just gonna add one step to it now. It's again, 16 right, 16 left. I'm gonna take three steps. All right, three big crow hops, and I'm gonna shoot again. Now again, we're working on technique, and we're working on power. We're not working on accuracy in this first round. All right, so here we go. We're gonna start out right-handed. One, two, three, as hard as you can, generating that hand speed. All right, you would do 15 right. One, two, three, fire, as hard as you can. Then we always go to that left again. Hands up. One, two, three, fire. Hands up. One, two, three, fire. All right? And that would be the end, all right, of round one. And again, round one is about technique and hand speed and power to shoot harder. Now, let's move to round two. All right, we're now into round two two and now we're talking about accuracy. Obviously we're working on technique, we're working on hand speed of shooting harder, but now we're going to bring the, the accuracy component into it. All right? So we take the goal and we make it a clock. All right? Right above this head, under the pipe in the middle, just like the top of the clock, this is 12 o'clock. All right? Our upper right hand corner, all right, that would be 130. Off hip, all right? would be three o'clock. We would say down in the corner, all right, that would be 4.30. Goalie's five hole is our six o'clock. Over here in this corner is 7.30. Off hip over here is 9 p.m. And then upper left, all right, would be 10.30 p.m. And we're gonna shoot two balls, 12, 130, 3, 4.30, 6, 7.30, 9.00, 10.30. Two balls at each, all right? So we would have 16 balls on each side. There's eight spots, two balls to each spot, right-handed, then 16 balls left-handed, two balls to each spot. That's why we like to have 32 balls. All right, now we're ready for round two. Now in round two, remember, we just talked about the clock, all right? We're gonna go 16 balls right, 16 balls left. We're gonna go two at every station. Now I'm only gonna show you, all right, this first round on our knees, all right? And that, but you would progress just like we did in round one from your knees to one knee to standing to your core engaged, all right, to the one step pitchers and to the crow hops. You do all the same things all the way through again, but shooting two balls, all right, to each one of those time frames that we have talked about. So I'm just gonna go through the first one um, here. I'm gonna go right-handed for 16 shots. I'm gonna go left-handed, and you'll get the gist of how this should carry through. So we're on two knees, which is step one. All right, 12 o'clock. Hands up. All right, 130. All right, three o'clock. Four thirty. Six o'clock, the five hole, the goalie's legs. All right, right handed. Now we're going to go from six to seven thirty. It's getting late, nine o'clock. And then we're going to pop them up in the quarter at 10.30. We would do 16 right, and then we would turn around and do 16 left. You do both these rounds through, 
you're going to be a better shooter in a very short period of time. Our best players do it, people that need improvement, guys that I've trained are five or six years old, young ladies that pl have played at Virginia, Oregon, uh, Vanderbilt, I've trained doing the same methods and they always end up being the best shooters on their team. Best of luck from the Seagulls.